Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, video on the therapeuticdrumming.net website. I'm so pleased and honored to be here with a good friend of mine and wonderful percussionist, uh, Christo Polani. Thank you, Kalani. It's great to have uh, the opportunity to sit with you and talk about drumming and healing. And appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Christo, Christo and I have worked together for years and he does a million different things. Uh, we both do a lot of stuff, right? Different things. And, but in this, in this video, you know, he was telling me about uh, some of the specific rhythms that he uses, different ways he uses sound uh, in like a sound healing practice. Chris is also a certified sound healer, in addition to being a drummer and percussionist and musician in general. So he's going to share a little bit of that with you guys. Great, yeah. Um, well, as you know, the drums are, are pretty diverse you know, the way people use them in different types of settings for healing and things. And, uh, and as we've gone through various cultural ways of using drums, I've kind of arrived at this very interesting and simple way of using them in a system that I learned uh, a number of years ago where there's these seven rhythms that are played um, with a, a mallet and a drum in a way where um, anybody can play if they have no drum experience at all, the rhythms are so simple that it allows everyone to kind of get into the flow of the rhythm very quickly and mm. as a group. Mm. So the idea is to play the rhythms in a unison way with a group of people. Mm -hmm. And each of the rhythms has a certain intention and it has a certain kind of, um, I guess you would call it journey aspect. Mm -hmm. So it's in a way they're related to a classic Native American teaching, which is called the Medicine Wheel Life Teachings, uh, where the different rhythms are associated with different directions and they have various other concordances with them, like uh, power animals and energy essences and uh, developmental stages of life and, mm. and uh, colors and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So what I've discovered in using them is that people have this very personalized journey when they you know, get involved in this type of drumming. But within the system of drumming, we've noticed that there are certain rhythms that actually have a little more, a deeper context for, for healing and for, for people to get into more of a sense of personal discovery, wellness, transformation, whatever you'd like to call that. Mm -hmm. And um, so I've kind of coined these rhythms, the in, uh, rhythms uh, within that system uh, as the intentional rhythms for wellness. So when we use those, they're, they're, the intent is to use them in a way where people are in a situation where they'd like something to change in their life or mm -hmm. they'd like to relax more or mm -hmm. they'd like to learn how to meditate more with using drums as a, as a way of, of offering that support. Mm -hmm. So the intentional rhythms for wellness then become a, a little subset of rhythms inside the seven directions rhythms. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. And uh, what I've learned is that when people coordinate their breathing, Mm. with the actual rhythm itself, then there's a deeper aspect of what happens in the somatic, in the body-oriented uh, information that's revealed. Sure. People have a mm -hmm. much deeper uh, either relaxation response or energization response mm -hmm. or a, a meditative response, depending on what kind of rhythm we're playing. Mm -hmm. So this breathing part is a, a little tricky for people at first because... You know, playing a rhythm is one thing, and mm. then coordinating your breath with it, sure. as you can imagine. Yeah. But because the rhythms are so simple, um, it gives us an opportunity to, to kind of make that a little bit user-friendly in that, in that way. Okay. So, so can you yeah. walk, walk me through, maybe I could be the client, Okay. and uh, just as an example of one of the modalities, one of the rhythms for one purpose, right? Because I know you said it can be for energy, it can be for relaxation, it can right. be for meditation. So, exactly. And that, of course, depends on what that person needs, right? Exactly. At yeah. that time. Exactly. So if we were, say, for example, if I was working with you uh, in some way where you wanted to have a deeper relaxation response, mm -hmm. then I could use this drum or I could use this drum, which actually has a little bit more of a 
an actual heartbeat I'm, sound. And I'm actually feeling that in my and legs. And you're feeling it, yeah. yeah. Like, just so, physically, Exactly. Yeah. So people can be yeah. sitting close to the drum and they can feel the vibration of the drum. Yeah. There are ways that you can also use drums like this to, to kind of drum around somebody's body uh, and their energy field. Being very careful that we're not, you know, blasting them with, right. with the uh, energy of the drum because it's very powerful. Mm. But the heartbeat, for example, um, is a, a rhythm that is really disarmingly simple. Mm -hmm. We find this in just about any indigenous culture. Mm -hmm. But there's something very curious and interesting about the heartbeat. And so I'll, I'll ask you, as I do this with you, to mm. tell me which one of these heartbeats that I'll play for you seems to be the one that is the most resonant with your own heart in your chest in the organic way of the, the way the heart actually beats. Mm. So let's go through that just for a second. So say we did a little bit of a setup Mm -hmm. for a relaxation response and mm -hmm. help you get into a deeper way to relax. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'd like you to ask you is if you listen to this heartbeat, which one do you think is more in tune with the way the, the actual heartbeats listen? Or is it this one? So is this my perception or just a feeling or am I going to check my heartbeat? <laughs> well, it more it's, of an a literal... actual, it's an actual depiction of how the heart beats. I, I feel... It's an actual replication in a sense where it's connected to actually how the, the heart actually oh, beats. Oh, okay. Well, that's an interesting question then. Now I feel like I'm not sure, but I, I feel more of an affinity just personally. More of a, I gravitate more towards the, the triplet feel. The second one. The second one. Right, right. Bum, 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 bum. With one rest in between yeah, those compared one, to two. Exactly, yeah. 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 So you, you so you're feeling something here that I think is really important in this in this what we call diaspora of these rhythms. Mm -hmm. Where they're either counted in groups of three beats or counted in four. All of these intentional uh, wellness rhythms are counted in groups of three. Mm. And the the reason being if you look at the geometry of it, the three is a triangle. So mm -hmm. It actually has more flow mm. and gets back to the to the beginning of the rhythm faster, mm -hmm. whereas a four beat has more of a square. Right. So you know when you're looking at something that's round and organic and feels a little bit more, you know, uh, in the body a natural feeling, mm -hmm. then we're working more uh, readily with rhythms that are in three beats. Mm. Now you notice I have a little rattle inside of this, mm -hmm. and the rattle is kind of a, a, a useful tool for people. Who are drumming uh, to kind of create more of a deeper uh, trance, almost I guess you would call it. You mm, know, mm. in the in the classic rhythms of the shamanic practices of ancient practices, when people were using the drum and rattle together, mm -hmm. this combination of these two sounds helped to put people into an altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I can also do the heartbeat with my hand if I want to, you know not have the rattle sound. Mm -hmm. So now the next step to this process, now that we've discovered this, this three beat heart, there's actually a way that you can put your hand over your heart if you like mm -hmm. and close your eyes. Maybe your left hand would be a little more. Yeah, there you go. Mm -hmm. And then um, the way to, to re, uh, work with the breath is to take a breath in after two and then a breath out. So it'd be like this, I could guide you like this. Breath in, breath out, in, out, in, out, in, out, and then just self-regulate it. Now, if I want to go a little deeper, in, slow the rhythm down, out, breath in, breath out, and then just say to yourself, you know, breath in, out,
and then just continue to breathe in that same fashion. And then whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. And for our purpose of just this demonstration, you can see how quickly yes. you drop into this place. Yeah. And then when the mm -hmm. synchronization of the, of the breathing, when the drum finishes playing, the, the breathing continues in this rhythmic fashion. You can stay for as long as you like. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that it be, starts to become very wonderful, the feeling of breathing in mm -hmm. and out in this synchronized way. So you'll notice that I also slowed the rhythm down over a period of time. And one yeah. of the ways you can do this is gradually bring the rhythm down. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to do that, of course, but it's a nice way to kind of deepen it so the breathing becomes right. even more deep as it goes. Yes, and I felt that immediately when you did slow the rhythm down, I needed to pace because we're synchronizing. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it gave me a chance to really feel the breath even more, but also deepen it. Right. Yeah, because exactly. I'm taking more time. So this is actually, in a sense, a mindfulness practice because mm -hmm. it brings you, first of all, it brings you into the awareness of your breathing mm -hmm. in a way that's extraordinarily powerful in the present moment awareness of your breath. But it also, the synchronization of it, the rhythmic synchronization mm -hmm. of it, creates this other sort of inflow and outflow that, that, that has this other response mm -hmm. that's quite remarkable. So that's an example of... Uh, me actually applying that rhythm. Mm -hmm. Now, if I was uh, working with you as a drummer and you wanted to learn that rhythm, mm -hmm. of course, uh, you know, you could take this particular drum, for example, and uh, uh, a, a mallet. And of course, I have other ones that, that uh, you know, don't necessarily have the rattle, but for our purposes today, we have them only to rattle. Mm -hmm. And so we would learn the rhythm very simply just by playing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then you would play along, uh -huh. and then then the uh, the idea would be to kind of get very familiar with this, so it's very simple and easy for you. You don't have to think about the rhythm at all. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of think but don't think. Yeah. Concentrate but don't concentrate. And I can see know? where if somebody was new to drumming, they would need a lot more support and right. guidance. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so even though this is still very simple, when mm -hmm. somebody adds the breath to it, it starts to go. Uh oh the head starts to get in there. Exactly. So the idea is to get into the feeling as quickly as possible. Uh -huh. The feeling and, and create the feeling of the drum actually connecting to your heartbeat. Mm. And so then you figure, okay, now the next step is to take the breath. So you think, okay, how are we gonna do this? So it's breathe in and breathe out. That feels like a really natural place. Breathe in and breathe out. So for every two, every two cycles, mm -hmm. breathe in and breathe out. So this is how you guide someone to do it. And then the next step is to close your eyes and to just kind of get into the field. Say it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I'll guide it for a moment. Out. In. Out. Like that. So then, you know, you self-regulate as you go. And then as we slow down, And then it's just listening a little deeper and doing a deeper coordination like that. So that's mm -hmm. how we would teach someone to do it. I would sit with them and actually take them through in exactly that manner. Yeah. So this is probably one of the most popular ones because, you know, we're living in a stressful environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone knows that uh, stress is a major cause of what we know is various types of diseases and illnesses in our culture. Mm -hmm. And so this gives someone a very organic way to connect with rhythm, connect with something organic in their own body, this primordial heartbeat rhythm, mm -hmm. and be able to use it in a way where you can move the rhythm around tempo-wise so that you can deepen the breath mm -hmm. to even cause a deeper relaxation. And whenever you feel like stopping, you just stop and then you stay with the breathing. Mm -hmm for as long as you feel is necessary for yourself. And I'll tell you, it doesn't take long, a couple yeah. of minutes. Right. It's astonishing how quick it works. Oh, it does. You know? I've got to say, when, when Christo was guiding me in the first example, I immediately went into this place of just feeling relaxed and, and just cradled you know, in this rhythm, which is really nice. It's nice to have somebody do that for you. Right. Uh, and hold you, hold you in, in that. And then... Holding the space for it. Holding yeah. the space. So all you have to do is... 
beach. Just, just breathe and relax. Yeah, yeah, breathe and relax. And that that's such a nice thing, kind of a gift, you know, to give somebody else or to give yourself. Or to give yourself, exactly. Yeah. And so, again, the beauty of it is how simple it is. Mm -hmm. and usually someone who has very rudimentary or even no drumming skills can mm -hmm. get this pretty quickly, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's, the, that's one of the examples of the intentional rhythms. Uh, some of the other ones are, um, they have a little, they're a little busier in terms of the rhythm structure to them. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and so the breathing is a little faster mm -hmm. as compared to that one. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get into more of an even state of meditation where it's not energized, not super relaxed, but just a nice calm, mm -hmm. I guess what you would call an alpha state, mm -hmm. you know, where you're clear and alert, but, mm -hmm. but relaxed. Yes. Um, then there's a rhythm for that. And then one, if you want to add more energy to your body and, right. and increase you, the sort of physical energy in a, in a way where the breathing adds more prana, more life force into the body, then mm -hmm. there's a rhythm that can help supplement that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I found that these are, are really effective. I yeah. mean, I, I was, you know, always interested in understanding how breath and meditation and breathing, which is a big important part of yoga and Qigong and mm -hmm. all of the other, you know, aspects of, of uh, martial art, passive martial arts and meditation practices, mm -hmm. the, the breathing is such a central piece. Mm -hmm. And all the mindfulness teachers use this idea of breath as a a very effective portal to the present moment. Right. So when you do this combination, it really seems to deepen it for people. And, Absolutely. Um, especially when they're interested in drumming in the first place. Exactly. Because you know? it brings in that musical element. And this, is, I was just thinking, this is such a perfect example of therapeutic drumming because we know that what makes therapeutic drumming different from just drumming is, is this is a great example of that because it's the, it's the purposeful, intentional use of a drumming experience right. to have a positive shift. And in this case, it could be relaxing, like using the heartbeat rhythm to prepare for sleep, right? Or to relax after a stressful work day when you get home. Exactly. Right? In any number of situations where relaxation is... Where you want to relax. Kind yeah. of, uh, you know, a, re a requirement almost, mm -hmm. you know. And there's a, lots of different ways that people now, as in, in the way that we live today, um, and the other thing I think also is the resonation with the actual physical body, you know, mm -hmm. the, the actual heartbeat itself, yeah. which is which is pretty uh, powerful, you know, to create this visualization and this intentional energy that actually has an organic response in the body, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, for all those reasons, I think it's been something that um, has been profound, you know, and really powerful for people to learn how to do this, you know, yeah. or to just receive it. Right. Either know, way. Or, yeah, either way. It works. Uh, the other, the other aspect. I just want to bring this up because of this drum, and those of you that are looking, maybe you can tell us a little bit about these instruments because, you know, there are a lot of drums on the market these days, of course. But I'm also a big proponent and fan of craftsmanship, yeah. you know, and the the fact that somebody made this drum, mm -hmm. right? And I can tell there's a lot of love, you know, that goes into the craftsmanship yeah. of this, this rattle, this drum, right? It's it's not just about making the sound, but when you pick this up, and I don't know if people can see the back, but I mean, this is just, can you talk a little bit about these instruments? Sure, uh, you know, of course. Um, this particular drum uh, is unique because of the octagonal shape of it. Mm -hmm. And just in the, in the folkloric or the, the spiritual folklore of, of, the, of the culture of using drums as, you know, as a, a way for healing in the Native American culture, this is a, a drum that signifies, um, in a way, it signifies the, the representation of the directions mm -hmm. of the medicine wheel. So we have the four cardinal directions here, east, south, west, and north. And then the eagles that are f flying in the four other directions are what they consider to be the, the corners of the universe. Mm. So you have a, a, nearly a circle here in this oct octagonal shape, mm -hmm. the geometry. In our, in our system, we're using the seven rhythms, which has the four cardinal and then there's an earth rhythm a sky rhythm and then the heartbeat mm -hmm. so there are four what are known as you know cardinal directions and then three what would be called more esoteric mm -hmm. or more for personal journey work in mm -hmm. the sh literally in the shamanic sense the altered mm -hmm. state of consciousness idea mm -hmm. so this particular drum um 
you know, was made in uh, Taos, New Mexico. And I'm not sure that the company's still in existence. It's called All One Tribe mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And what's cool about it is it, have a, it has a little mitten in the back. Mm -hmm. So when you put your hand through it, you can just hold the drum without any stress mm -hmm. in your hand. Mm -hmm. And it's very comfortable. It's very comfortable and it's very mobile. So if you're moving around, mm -hmm. you know, using the drum in a way like this, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you can, it's modular. Mm -hmm. The feather is just something that I put on uh, that was given to me by a ceremonial leader, and you know that's just a little artistic piece on my end. But um, and personalization and personalization, yeah. 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 And the rattle, same thing. I got this rattle at a uh, at a powwow ceremony. It was made by Navajo craftsmen. Uh, you can see it has beautiful fur and leather pieces and bead work on it, and just you know a leather handle. And what I did is I just took a, a mallet, a beater, and I just took some gaff tape mm -hmm. and taped it so we have the, the two happening together. Yeah. And uh, as I was mentioning earlier, in a lot of the rhythms of, of the of the you know the altered state rhythms or the shamanic drumming rhythms, the classic ones, the rattle is a is a very powerful part of that mm -hmm. idea. Yeah. So this continuous rattle and rhythm together creates a deeper state of relaxation mm -hmm. or, or at, uh, it facilitates the altered state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. So um, just to go into one of the other rhythms for a moment, um, in some of the other rhythms that we were talking about within that system, there's one that's kind of like, I like to think of it as a, uh, a one size fits all healing rhythm, you know, and it's actually known as the rhythm of the earth. Mm. And it sounds very similar to what you would see in the movies when uh, cowboys would be riding, uh -huh. and, and all of a sudden you'd hear this rhythm, and it, it, oh, the Indians are coming. Right, the stereotypical yeah, the stereotypical thing, rhythm. which actually is a, is a rhythm that is known as a thank you rhythm. It's this uh -huh. one. Uh -huh. So this is this means thank you. Mm -hmm. So when the Indians were coming, they were saying <laughs> thank, you. thank you. It's an interesting thing. So this one is uh, slightly different, but it has. Um, has a little pause at the end, so it's... So if somebody's experiencing a trauma of some kind, or maybe, uh, you know, they're upset about something emotionally, could be any number of, you know, things that are happening or an affliction of some kind. Mm -hmm. More of a psycho-emotional thing. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to... Um, work with uh, something that's happened in the physical body. I mean, there are a number of um, ways that you can use vibrational healing to help, you know, move energy in the body, to help things that might be in the body. But if somebody has a physical affliction, this is not going to be the most effective treatment for it. Mm -hmm. This is more something to get somebody to kind of do a visualized guided journey if they're in a psycho-emotional place where they might need support. Mm -hmm. So you can also use this rhythm and drum over the body. Mm -hmm. Somebody has, and I'll just give you a demonstration, you can close your eyes and, mm -hmm. and just see how much energy comes off that drum, you know, and can move it in different parts around the body over the chakra points. Or if somebody knows that their stomach is tight for some reason, or they've been nervous about something, you can just drum over that area of the body. And again, keeping a good distance between the drum and the body so that there's not too much energy or even above the head. So you can feel a lot of energy coming off that drum. Yes. Uh, and we're not playing hard or loud, mm -hmm. but it's a consistent, intentional rhythm that you know surrounds the body with this warm, beautiful, supportive energy, and it helps people to kind of move through something mm -hmm. and assist them. And of course there are, and I think you know this from some of the research in drumming, that one of the things that they found in the research with Barry Bittman and his crew that did this research uh, about the actual healing aspects of rhythm in drum circles and things, or the guided visualization part of it that goes along with the drumming, where mm -hmm. people are given an opportunity to go into a, a place of peace and quiet, right. and this type of visualization practice is very effective with a, with a consistent, simple rhythm like that. So you would... And we're not doing that here, obviously, but you would then use this as the foundation and then add in the guided visualization exactly, yeah. cues on top of that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So there'll be moments where it's just drumming, 
And then there'd be moments where we would bring some type of visualization component and mm. a breathing component and allow someone to kind of be in that mm -hmm. energy for a moment. Right. And then allow the drum to keep carrying that sort of on the wind. And then allow them to integrate what is, is given in the uh, visualization and then go back to the drumming. So it kind of goes back and forth between the, the actual guided visualization and the drum support. You know? Okay. So what would be... And there, again, this depends on the individual because it's exactly, a personalized yeah. thing. It's not prescriptive in that you can say, if you do this, this is going to happen, right? It's just, you're, right. you're creating an opportunity for somebody to, what it sounds like from what you're saying is you're creating an opportunity for somebody to have some visualizations so they can realize some more information about what might be happening in their body, in exactly. their psychosomatic experience, right? Exactly. So it might, it might then reveal something or they might have an aha moment of oh my gosh i was feeling this tension because of now i understand why or, you know or something like that is yeah, that right yeah that's the idea okay. and i think also what i am particularly interested in are giving people techniques where they can do their own what would be called self-healing mm -hmm. so the idea that there's information that's contained in the body and in the energy field mm -hmm. emotional energy thought forms, etc. There's a lot of research that's showing this in the bio field, what is right. known as the bio field, mm -hmm. that uh, it contains a lot of information about our wellness. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people, you know, you can't really get to it through the mind though. If you're thinking about it, right. a lot of times, you know, the mind won't give us that. But we can get to it through the heart and we can get to it through other ways of breathing and relaxing and then information sort of, sort of comes to people. Mm -hmm. So the guided visualizations are a way to give people you know, a little bit more of a technique where they can access this stuff. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and in addition to that, um, you know, the idea that, uh, um, that this continuous rhythm, this continuous repetitive simple thing mm -hmm. creates the sort of altered state of consciousness that gives people opportunities to access this, this sort of gateway of, in, in a sense, is quantum information mm -hmm. that's, that's out there that is available mm -hmm. but it gives people a gateway to get to it in mm -hmm. an accessible way and something they can do for themselves yes so in, a, in the same way that w this rhythm is being played for you as the heartbeat was people can learn how to do this on their own or listen to a recording of it if mm -hmm. they if they just want to relax their body mm -hmm. but the idea of this um this somatic piece you know mm -hmm. what's internalized in the body and the visualization component, which often what I refer to as, um, you know, deepening your internal landscape, mm -hmm. where people will say, well, I can't see colors, you know, and I don't know how to do this. Or, mm -hmm. So they can overthink um, something about visualization. It can sometimes seem abstract, but often it's if you can just feel into it, if you can start with the feeling nature, mm -hmm. then something might show up or, or it may not be as vivid as a, a colorful landscape, mm -hmm. but people can have a memory about something and they can, they can go there. Yes. So part of it is also going back and reframing memories right. and helping to create a new scenario where you literally virtualize the new scenario. You, you breathe into it, you feel it in your body, you might even move a mm. certain way mm -hmm. to kind of create a new way of, of reframing the story. Right, that is it's so very important. powerful. It's yeah. really powerful and really huge. And like you said, something that people can do for themselves when, right. they, when they have the tools. Exactly, a, it's, it's a, a simple tool. technique, a couple of, of practiced sessions, guided mm -hmm. sessions, mm -hmm. taking some notes, you know, kind of working with it a little bit with the process. Mm -hmm. And then people, I see how to do it. And yep. then, then it's just like anything, it's just putting it into practice. Right, you know? doing the practice. And I just want to reiterate for anybody who's watching this, this is not like woo-woo uh, mysticism thing. This, these are very simple things right. that are very accessible, That some of which is based in or connected to uh, Native American practices or maybe Tibetan practices, you know, different codified systems that are traditional. But I would say that while there might be a tendency for some people to want to go down that path and study that route, it's not necessary. As long as, you, as long as you're respectful right, right, exactly. of people's traditions, you can use this drum that is a Native American style drum, but you can use it in, for your own practice, right, in your own way. Exactly, yeah, right. and uh, that's a very good point. Uh, this is not limited to any 
dogma about a cultural expression or mm -hmm. um, these images and this this particular tradition is fantastic and of course uh, it's it's wor it's worked for hundreds of thousands you know of years for mm -hmm. many many people and I think you're right just being respectful of it treating it with dignity you know in a way where um, it's just a tool that we use we're not pretending to be Indians. We're not, you know, right. but we're but we're honoring this tradition. And in a similar way, the the the, the classic I would call shamanic drum rhythm, which is this continuous rhythm. This is found in in all all over the globe. It's in Mongolia. It's in South America. It's in Native American practice. It's it's in many indigenous cultures. Mm -hmm. The rattle and the drum, and literally what it does is it creates like a brainwave state mm -hmm. that allows people's consciousness to connect with that brainwave, that certain cycle per second mm -hmm. that creates the, the, the opportunity to experience the, right. the deep natural altered state of consciousness, which helps that visualization process very much. Helps Absolutely. I, I think getting back to what you were saying about the mind, you know, I, I'm, I have my own teachings that I, that I put in my Evolve podcast about mindfulness, and we can talk a little bit about mm -hmm. mindfulness, but one, one thing that I think is important to realize is that it's difficult to think yourself well, when in fact the thinking, I mean everybody knows this, especially in societies where we are more privileged, we have more free time, right. we have more you know, disposable income, disposable time, that we often think ourselves into a state of stress. And to think that we can think ourselves out of a state of stress is, is naive and probably... Right. Well, it's know. kind of like the classic adage, you know, the, the way that you create the problem is not the way that you solve it. You exactly. Know? So I think what we've learned in all types of meditation practices that have been integrated into wellness programs is that the relaxation response is, is very key. Mm -hmm. uh, finding a way to use the breath or some way to calm the center, calm the senses, yeah. so that everything is much more relaxed and internal. And then from that way of being, you can create you know, uh, passageways to get to the information that will help you. So again, I think, the, uh, and, and one of my teachers said, you know, you can't get to your heart through your mind, mm -hmm. but you can get to your heart through your body. Through your body. So yeah. if, we, if we work with ways of accessing energy in the body, we have a better chance. Yeah. And these are things that are simple, actually very simple, and easy to remember and mm -hmm. can be applied on an ongoing basis once, once people know the techniques. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun. And it's And nurturing. it's fun, right. Yeah. And it's, it's musical. It's musical. So, so it has a, a, that angle to it, which also yeah. is, is, for those of us who have been playing a while as drummers, you know, this is another adage that we can work the musical... In a, in a sense, recreational music as well as a healing component together, mm -hmm. so that it gives it deepens that process for somebody to feel like they're actually playing music as well. Mm -hmm. So it gives it that extra, you know, bonus. Yeah, because then you could take this as a individual practice to start with, or maybe it becomes, maybe it starts off as a receptive practice, right? right? So you mm -hmm. go. I come you might to you. Receive it at first, right? Yeah, and Learn you play it. the drum, mm -hmm. and then you, over time you teach me how I can play the drum, and I still do it for myself. Um, but then maybe over time I feel confident, and I then I go play with other people. Exactly. And then we have that. Whole or social you can component. also like I also facilitate drum circles where people learn this process, mm -hmm. and within 20 minutes everybody's playing these rhythms as if they'd played them all their life. Mm -hmm. you know, they're really simple. And that's one of the beautiful things about it is the simplicity of it. And remembering that we're playing this rhythm over and over and over again. So it's simple and repetitive, simple right. and repetitive. And it, it, it helps it to just become more internalized in that way. Mm -hmm. So the, the group effort helps to create a bigger wave of that energy. And when people are sitting in a circle, they can support each other by mm -hmm. drumming in, in a very unspoken way. And it, it creates like this sense of community, yeah. especially when everybody's playing the same unison yes, rhythm. Yeah, it absolutely. really amplifies the energy of that circle. Yeah. So that's the other way that, that um, you, you can have you know, the accessibility to learn these rhythms quickly and mm -hmm. apply them in a, in a way. And that's often called personal power practice, where you learn these rhythms and you use them for the aspects of your life where, the, where they would be... A, applied you mm -hmm. know, to actually be useful mm -hmm. so it's an ancient technology really yeah i mean and in, in, in a world where everything is so you know digitized computerized right. right. etc fast moving 
information flow. This yeah. this is a way to even this approach slows you down. Right. You know, just to sit here with a drum that looks like this um, and to feel the energy of these instruments, it just that in itself slows you down. Yeah. Brings you to a place where you start to relax. You, you know? know, we yeah, absolutely true, and that's what I appreciate about about this. And just you know, as we begin to close this, and this is so fascinating. I'm going to ask you where people can find out more in a second, sure. but. You know, drumming has unfortunately been stigmatized by society in a lot of ways. And a lot of people will sort of, it's been marginalized or, or kind of painted uh, with this view of being crude or being primitive or being, you know, just frivolous or something. And what we're mm -hmm. finding now is that actually uh, these practices have stayed, they've been around a long time, and they, they can be practiced in a way that is completely applicable and relevant you know, yeah. to people's lives. It's absolutely. It's, yeah. Yeah. So, so it takes, it take. you're right. It, it takes the stigma out of it. It just becomes another holistic way of getting to know who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and also getting to connect with other people yeah. in a beautiful unspoken way. When we do these circles, everyone's playing with their eyes closed and the rhythm is so powerful. You can hear people are listening in a different way. Mm -hmm. So, it deepens all of these aspects. It deepens our listening, our visualization, our breathing, our awareness of ourselves, how we can express ourselves, how we can use musical uh, approach, and to do something on these ancient instruments that honors a tradition that's been around for thousands of years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a shiny object. You right. know, it's not the flavor of the month. Right. Um, but it does have extraordinarily powerful ramifications, that's for sure. You know, um, just... Just one thing to add, and if I could interject, I've also, and, I, and not, to, not to say you shouldn't use technology. I mean, I have a you know, smartphone, we all have smartphones. Oh. But I've got to say that you know, the internet, smartphones, iPad, you know, all these um, devices, I don't know how much they've really done in terms of bringing people together. It seems to me that what they do more than bring people together is actually separate people into their own little spaces and their own little yeah. head spaces. Uh, when you go out and you'll see people at a restaurant, you see kids on their with the screen yeah. face, I call it, right. with that little glow. This is a way to undo some of that and to actually, yeah. sh where people show up and have, you know, an authentic experience. Right? That's, th that's a good way of saying it, yeah. Again, you know, I think technology is going to be around. And in medical, in the medical field and in research of various types, it's, it's been incredible what we've learned, you know. Um, this is another way. This is just a way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not necessarily something that everyone would want to do. Or, but people that are interested in drumming sort of gravitate to this, mm -hmm. especially if they're interested in, in their own self-healing or wellness or in assisting people who, you know, might need that support, mm -hmm. you know. But my feeling is if it, if it helps you get into the body, it helps you access energy inside your body, then that's immediately a gateway to something that works. We right. just know this works. It's yep. one of the reasons why yoga and Qigong have been so effective and for thousands of years and that it's becoming more popular is people yeah. just know, I feel so good after I do yoga. I feel yeah. so good after I do Qigong or exactly. you know, balanced and centered. And what's beautiful about this system is how simple it is. Yeah. So you don't have to know anything about drumming. And within a couple of sessions, you've got it. And then you can apply it to yourself and with other people. So yeah. Gives it that wonderful piece. Yeah. I, I think it's a very simple, to me, it's a very simple formula. You know, it's not magic, it, although it can feel magical, uh, especially afterwards. But yeah, it's a, just to follow up on what you said, if it, you know, if you try it, and this is the key, you've got to put yourself, you've you got to try apply it. it. Yeah. yeah, you got to try it. Experience it. Experience mm -hmm. it, then decide for yourself um, how you feel. But to me, the formula is pretty simple. It's just that I know that I call it having too much mind. I, you know, if, you have to, if you're having too much mind, your, your, you know, your mind's always trying to solve problems for you. That's really what it's for, mostly. And then if you don't have problems, it starts making up problems to solve, you know, because it wants to help you, it wants to be useful. Right. What I find that this does is it is the drumming, both on a somatic level and on the auditory level, is, is it gives your mind enough to kind of say, okay, just be there. You don't have to be trying to fix my life right now. You don't have to try to fix everything. You don't have to worry about you know, solving all the problems and it, mm -hmm. just hang out with this rhythm. And it, so it gives your mind enough to occupy it without 
taxing you right. so much that you're that you have anxiety. Exactly, and that's right? where, that was where when I was saying before, think but don't think, uh -huh. concentrate but don't concentrate. Right. It's like right. you're you you just think enough to get what's going on, and then you go into feeling yes. as quickly as possible. Yeah. Allowing the accessibility to this other stuff. So, but what's beautiful is it does allow people of either gender to get together and play and connect. Mm -hmm in a sort of a safe and non-spoken way, in a supportive way. Yeah. So I think it's a beautiful thing to see how the rhythm culture has blossomed, both yeah. with men and women, mm -hmm. and together. You know? And, and cross-generational. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it is, it is something that everybody can try, everybody can participate in fully, and it can become a personal practice that turns into a partner practice, or a small group practice, yeah. or a large group practice. Well, we could go on and on. Uh, Christo, I want to thank you so much. This is fascinating. My pleasure. Yeah, thank and, you so much. Yeah, and so just, you know, let people know how they can reach you okay. uh, and learn more. Well, the website is uh, www.soundformation.com. Uh, there's a lot of information there, articles on drumming and wellness. Uh, I have a life coaching practice also where we use drumming and, and some of these mindfulness practices in there. Of course, there are all the social media parts, but if you get on that website, it'll take you to the Facebook and, and the uh, Reverb Nation and Twitter pages where some of these events are being posted. I do have a couple places that I play quite regularly, a couple of um, wellness centers, and I work with a couple nonprofits where we're working with children. Um, and so uh, all that information is on that website. And, and uh, you know, and again, I think the, the Therapeutic Drumming website is also going to have quite a few wonderful resource links and things there. So I'm encouraging you to stay in touch with Kalani also and stay connected to this important new website that we're creating that's going to give people an opportunity to not only learn about drumming but to participate and get involved. So yeah. so thank you for, for having me. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> My pleasure. So whether you are curious you, whether you've never done this before or you have some experience or you want to or you're a teacher or a facilitator and you want to share what you do yeah. come to the website join the conversation uh, see what other people are doing we're all there to share it's completely free and it always will be therapeuticdrumming.net all right we're going to go back and do some heartbeat rhythm right now we'll see you guys next time <laughs>